As an entrepreneur, there's gonna be a lot of times in your career that you feel stressed out, overwhelmed, and downright burned out. And in these times is when it's hard to stay motivated to do the work. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you in this video. I'm gonna share with you the seven tips that I've used over the years to stay motivated, to stay focused, and even to do the work when I don't really feel like doing it. All right, so now I've switched over my computer screen. I'm gonna go through these one by one. Now, mostly these notes are for myself to touch on points I wanna make sure I don't forget, but you're welcome to read along as we go. Now, what I wanna touch on really quick before we jump in is realizing that a lot of the things that you're gonna go through as an entrepreneur are gonna be really things that are mental. It's gonna be up here. It's gonna be things that you, you make much bigger deals than what they really are. You know, there's been times in my career that I think like it's, it's the end of the world. Literally things just hit the fan, right? And a lot of times I made the situation much worse than it really needed to be. And that's what you got to really realize as an entrepreneur. A lot of times when you say I'm burned out, right, or I'm overwhelmed, it's just something that you're feeling. It's it's an emotion that you're going through at the current moment. And when you say I'm overwhelmed, well, guess what? You, you stay overwhelmed. What you got to say is, okay, what's the solution to this problem? How do I fix it? And that's the biggest thing and the biggest lesson I can tell you that I've learned over the years is that when I'm demotivated or I don't feel like I'm motivated to do the work, it's because of the fact that it's all in my head. It's something that I'm telling myself, like I'm not motivated or I'm frustrated or I'm angry. And really I'm creating that situation and making it worse than it needs to be. So with that being said, I want to go through the seven tips to stay motivated and, and we'll go through these one by one. Now, number one is to realize there'll be times you feel overwhelmed, burned out. And the last thing you want to do is work on your business. Now, what you want to realize is this is normal. You know, at the, at the end of the day, a lot of times we don't we don't see people share this stuff. And I can tell you personally, when I first started getting into internet marketing and learning all this stuff, I would follow people and I thought they had the perfect life. I thought that their life was amazing. You know, I'd look at them on social media. And what you got to realize is that most people are only showing you their highlight reel. They're showing you the awesome car, the travels. You know, I could honestly show that stuff off myself if I wanted to, but I really didn't want to be known for that kind of entrepreneur. I didn't want to be known for the type of person that just flashes money and cars and my travels and all this stuff because at the end of the day, I got more value to add than that. And so I want you to realize that a lot of the people you may be following they're probably only showing you a piece of the puzzle. What you've got to realize is that they have stress. They have feelings like this that they're going through too. Just most people don't share it. Now, I am noticing a trend in entrepreneurship now that people are sharing more of the emotions and the struggles and the things that they're going through. And it's just because they realize that like being real and being authentic and raw is much more attractive than trying to make it look like you're this perfect person because we all know that there's, there's no such thing, right? Now, I want you to realize there's going to be a lot of times you're going to get rejected. You're going to be frustrated because maybe a business deal falls through. You know, in my case, people steal money from you. Um, you know, there's going to be times that literally like you think something's going to work and then all of a sudden it just it just doesn't work out the way you wanted it to. And this is going to happen. It's going to be times that you feel just out, outright exhausted and overwhelmed. And you got to realize this is just a temporary feeling as I talked about a minute ago. Now, here's a rule that I, I learned years ago. And it was something that basically the guy talked about. I can't remember who I learned it from, but they talked about at the end of the day, you can't ride this emotional roller coaster. You can't have these extreme highs and these extreme lows. And what I can tell you now, if I make say $10,000 in a day, I'm like right here. If I say lose money, I'm right here. Now, what I can tell you is this is not something that you, you learn right away. It's a mindset you have to adapt. It's a mindset you have to learn. And the reason I did this is because I used to get super excited. I'd be pumped up and I'd get out of bed at 4 a.m. and ready to work. And then all of a sudden, like things would stop working. And then I'd just like sleep in bed for 30 days. I'm not even joking. There was times that I spent 30 days almost in the bed. I would literally get up, watch Netflix. And I was just so demotivated because I lost money. And I thought like I got lucky or whatever it may be. And I learned this from this person where they said, you know, you can't ride this emotional roller coaster. You're never going to be happy, not just in business, but in life. So this guy had this rule where basically he allows himself one hour to be pissed, to be upset, to be frustrated. And then after that, you got to get over it. And I thought like, you know, that's really, that's really great. Like I can just be really angry for like an hour, get it out of my system and then get back to work. And so these days I don't even really get like angry that long. Like there'll be times, I mean, I'll be honest, I get frustrated, I get stressed out, but it's about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm like, all right, Zach, let's pull it together. Let's think about what is the solution to our problems and let's get back to it. Now, my final thing here on, on this tip is, is meditation. Now, some people are not going to want to do this. They're going to think it's all woo woo. And what I can tell you is meditation has really helped me in my life. It's helped me with like things like depression, anxiety, depending on if you watch my documentary, you know, in the past I struggled with depression very heavily. And once I started meditating, it helped me stay centered. It helped me stay focused. And like times when things don't go well, 
this is when meditation is very important. You know, at the end of the day, there's a reason they say that like personal development is like brushing your teeth. You should do it every day. And meditation is the same thing. Like one thing you got to realize is that like, say when you're, you're, you're stressed out and you're overwhelmed, right? A lot of times that's because you're, 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 you're thinking in the future. You have anxiety. If you're living in the past, you're experiencing depression. So if you're beating yourself up over things that happened like a month ago, six months ago, six years ago, which people often do, you probably do it to yourself. You're experiencing depression. If you're thinking about like, what, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I do this and I lose money? You're experiencing anxiety. And that's what meditation really does. It helps you like center yourself. It helps you stay right in the moment because at the end of the day, think about it. Even though the action steps you're taking today will lead you to your new future. When you're constantly thinking in the future, you're creating situations in your head that are not true. Remember what I said earlier, a lot of times the problems I had was all up here. I was creating situations that weren't even real. And then I'd get overwhelmed. I'd get stressed out. Next thing you know, I'm in bed for 30 days depressed because who knows why I created a situation in my head that was way worse than it needed to be. So I highly suggest that you look into meditation and, and honestly, there's a million different ways to do it. Go, go YouTube, to YouTube, type in how to do meditation. You'll find everything from like Tony Robbins meditation method. You'll find other people's meditation methods. Like it doesn't really matter. The whole point is learning to live in the moment, to, to focus right now and not in the past and not in the future. All right. So tip number two, in order to stay motivated is really creating a detailed list of why you're building a business. You know, this is something I find is really, really important. There's going to be a lot of times you don't really feel like doing the work. I mean, honestly, I think there's going to be more tough times than there is going to be good. Um, I'm really big into, you know, stoicism. If you don't know what it is, it's basically that you know, life is about suffering and, and that's something you need to accept. And so what I can tell you is that the times that you don't want to do it is the most important to really know why you even started the business in the first place. You know, for me, one of the things you want to do is you want to know like in detail, like how much money do you want to make, you know, a year, a month, and like, let's just say, you know, you want to make a million dollars a year. You should know how much that comes out to you need to make a month. You should know how to how much you need to make a day. Like if you don't know things in detail, you're probably never going to reach the goal. It's just like one of those things you're shooting for. Like I want to make a million dollars, but you don't even know why you want to make a million dollars, why it's important to you, why it's going to impact your life and why you need to make that money. You're just saying this number because you think that's what rich is. Now, you also really need to, to, to state like what I just said. Why is it important to you? Why is this something that you're, you're doing? You know, like for instance, is it because you want to own, you know, the nice cars that you want the notoriety that people perceive you as, as successful? Do you want your family members to look up to you? Are you doing it because you want to help your family? You know, for me, it wasn't about like really luxurious things. It wasn't about getting the mansion and the supercar. It was for me to help my family. That was really why I was doing business. So every time that I felt like quitting, and if, if you watch my documentary I have at the end of this video, You'll see, like when I talked about, I was in the Philippines. And I didn't really share all of it, but there's a lot of times that, like, I, I literally, I think I tried to quit and go home about 150 times. And every single time I wanted to quit, I kept reminding myself that, like, I want to be able to help my family. I want to be able to give them a better life. I want to be able to impact their life. And so when I wanted to quit on myself, I constantly remind myself of my family. For you, that could be your kids or. If you're young, it could be you want to travel the world or you want the supercar. It doesn't matter if it's something that's like more like, you know, you want luxurious things or you're, you're doing it for somebody else or something bigger than yourself. There's no right or wrong thing here. And that's something like don't listen to people when they tell you, oh, you shouldn't be focused on owning a Ferrari or a mansion. At the end of the day, this is your life you're living and you got to really decide why is it you're doing what you're doing. And if you can't declare why you're doing what you're doing in detail, you're probably never going to get it. So the point here is to make a very, very detailed list of what exactly you're building a business for. All right. So tip number three to stay motivated is to create a vision for your life and your business. Now, some people do this in a different way. You know, some people are big into creating vision boards. Um, for me personally, I like to create a list that I read every single day. So it's kind of like tip number two up here. You create a detailed list of why you're building a business. But here's the thing. Number, number two is more like the why, the why you're doing it, right? But a vision is much bigger than a why. You know, a lot of people teach about, you know, you got to know why you're doing it, which I just talked about a little bit. So it's, it's kind of the same thing. But a vision is much more powerful than your why. And here's why. When times get tough, when, when there's those times that like you're just frustrated, you're, you're not going to want to do it, right? And the vision is what's going to pull you through. Your why is just not going to be strong enough. Your vision is who you want to become or what you want your life to be like, you know, one year, three years, five years, 10 years from now. It's not just about making money. It's not about how much money you have in the bank. It's where you see your life and your, in your future, you know, three to five years from now. And you should be thinking long-term, not just short-term, short because even though we talked about meditation and living in the moment, 
it is still important that you know where you want to go because if you're just working, 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 you're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to be very unproductive. You're going to you're going to chase every different opportunity that's thrown at you, and you're never really going to know what you want out of life. So you're never going to be happy. So. What I do is I define in detail. Now I create like an Evernote file. You can use anything. You can use Google Docs, you can use Evernote, you can write it down on paper if you're like a pen and paper kind of person, or you can put it on your phone, it doesn't really matter. But I create a very detailed list of like why I'm doing what I'm doing. So it's kind of in point number two, I talk about why I'm building the business, but then I go into extreme detail. Like, you know, one year from now, this is where I wanna be. I wanna make this amount of money a month. I want to achieve this, I wanna achieve this. I know in detail where I want my life to be one year from now, five years from now. So every single thing that I do every single day is aligned with where I'm trying to go. So here's an example. People ask me a lot of times, like, Zach, what do you think of drop shipping? Why are you not in drop shipping? And you know, I've done drop shipping before. I'm not really a fan of the business model, I'm not hating on it, but it doesn't align with what I want to build. It, it, and that's why I never really went hard at it because I didn't enjoy it. It didn't align with what my, my vision is or where I'm going. So I don't get into business models or I don't do things that's not aligned with my vision. I don't go buy things that's not aligned with my vision. I don't surround myself with people that don't really fit where I want my life to be or the kind of person I want to become five years from now. So what I like to do is basically use this example all the time is think of Michael Jordan, right? You have to kill the person you are now, as bad as that sounds, to become the person you, you, you are capable of becoming. If you look at Michael Jordan, right, when he first started out, he got rejected. He was not somebody who was this amazing basketball player. He couldn't even make the high school team, but he decided inside of himself that he was going to be one of the best basketball players of all time. And what did he do? He practiced, he practiced, he practiced, and he become that person over time. If he didn't declare who he wanted to become, what he wanted to achieve, he probably would have been like some of the mediocre basketball players if he would have even made it to the NBA. So this is why a vision is so important. You gotta know where you're going, not just the things you wanna own. I mean, you could put that in your vision, you can, you can create, I want to drive Lamborghinis and I want to live in a mansion. But you also should define the kind of person you want to become, the kind of person you want people to think about you when they, they, when they think of you, that what, what do they think about? You know, I know this in detail. The kind of person I want to be known for is somebody who helps people, somebody who is a person of value, somebody who has strong core values. And people, I want people to be able to count on me. So these are things that you really need to define in detail because if you don't know like why you're doing it, trust me, on the days that you don't feel like doing work, you're just going to sleep in. For me, on days that I don't feel like doing it, I just remind myself I'm letting other people down if I don't live up to my potential. All right, tip number four is pretty simple. It's just do the thing when you don't feel like doing the thing. And as funny as this sounds, what I can tell you is, and I guarantee if you think about some point in your life, you know, and I don't know if you go to the gym, but personally I do, it's a big part of my life. And what I can tell you, there's a lot of mornings I wake up and I'm just like, oh, Zach, I don't, uh, no gym today. Like, I just don't feel like going to the gym. Lifting weights is the last thing I want to do. Sticking to my diet and eating, you know, chicken and the same food I pretty much eat every day, not what I want to do. I'd rather eat pizza and just sit around and watch Netflix. And I constantly remind myself, okay, is the thing that I'm doing today, by, by, by not doing this thing, Am I going to be happy with myself six to 12 months from now? Six to 12 months from now, am I going to look down upon myself or am I going to want to pat myself on the back and be proud of myself? And that's what keeps me going. And what I can tell you is the times that I've like skipped, say example, the gym, I don't go to the gym. You know, I have five days a week, I go to the gym. And on if I skip one of those days, I'm just like, oh, I'm tired. What I know is that I always feel bad about myself and, and I beat myself up when I don't do it. Even today, like here's a perfect example. Today, I had a headache. I felt horrible when I woke up, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay home. And then I told myself, no, I got to go to the gym. And by going to the gym, I, my headache went away. I felt way better. Now I'm able to shoot a video because I'm productive. But if I would have stayed at home, I probably would still have a headache. I probably would have done nothing. I would have made an excuse as to why not to do it. And what I can tell you is when I do the thing, when I don't want to do the thing, a lot of times that's the days that turn out to be the best. So what I can tell you, if you're not motivated. The best way to get motivated is just to do it. Do the thing you know you needed to do because the reason being is you're gonna feel good about yourself. You're gonna feel good because you were consistent. You're gonna feel good because you weren't weak and just give up like most people would. And you're gonna feel consistent because you didn't sell yourself short. You proved yourself right that you can do the things you said you were gonna do. Me personally, what's important to me as a core value is that I'm a person of my word. When I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. I don't quit because I just don't feel like doing it. And what I can tell you is most people in society are very weak. They can't stick to anything. And they tell themselves, I'm not motivated, so I don't want to do anything. And what you got to do is you got to become mentally strong because when you do, you're going to outproduce everyone. All right, so tip number five is to create a routine, a daily routine specifically that you follow literally seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
What I can tell you personally is I used to be the kind of person that really winged everything in my life. Like some days I would go to bed at one o'clock in the morning. Other days I would go to bed at 10 p.m. if I was tired. Sometimes I would wake up at, you know, 4 a.m. Sometimes it would be 9 a.m. And my life was a sporadic mess. And once I actually created a daily routine, I noticed I just felt so much better. And what I want you to realize is that motivation is a very short lived feeling. Like right, right now, this video is how to stay motivated, right? But there's gonna be a lot of days you just don't feel motivated. This is why I'm so obsessed with things like the Navy SEALs. I'm obsessed with stoicism. And it's because these people understand that life was meant to be hard, not easy. A lot of people want everything to be easy. A lot of people want things to be, you know, just amazing every day. And there's also personal development gurus out there that want you to make you feel that if you don't feel amazing every day, something's wrong with you. And I can tell you that it's just not the truth. There's gonna be a lot of days you feel depressed. There's going to be a lot of days you're just like not in it. There's going to be a lot of days you just feel, I don't know, completely demotivated to the point that you don't want to do nothing. And this is normal. But you got to learn to develop a routine because it will eliminate more of these days. You know, personal development is something that you should be doing every single day. You know, just like I mentioned earlier, it's like brushing your teeth and it's more important that you do it you know, every day because you're preparing yourself for those days that you don't have a good day. You know, if you just do personal development when you feel good, of course, it's going to be easy. It's just like when in business, you're making tons of money. Of course, it's easy to do the business. It's, of course, it's easy to do the things you need to do because everything's going great. But when times don't go great, this is the important part when you know mindset comes into play. This is when it's important that you have that routine you follow because there's not much thinking needed. So what I do is I create a routine in my day that I do the same thing regardless if I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling amazing. You know, I had a good day, I had a bad day, it doesn't really matter. I just do the things that I know that I need to do and there's not much thinking involved. And this is what I can tell you no matter if we're talking business. Another thing I see often when people want to lose weight, this is why they don't lose weight. They want to wing it, right? They, they, they create these diets where like, okay, they go good for a couple weeks and they quit. For me, I do intermittent fasting, so I don't got to think about it. I eat from 12 p.m. to basically 8 p.m. every single day, and I know that I can eat basic food groups, and that's all I do. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to be like, oh, man, I'm hungry. What am I going to eat now? You know, it's 9 a.m. I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. If I did that, I would be so fat again. That's how I ended up getting fat is because I didn't have a routine. I just ate when I felt like I was hungry. A lot of times I overate. I had no routine I was following. And so if you want to stay motivated – you got to create a personal development routine. For you, that could be reading a book 30 minutes a day. It could be listening to a podcast. It could be watching, you know, YouTube videos. You know, something that I used to do all the time, especially when I was getting into losing weight, I would literally get on YouTube every morning and I would watch videos of people that did the transformation that I wanted. That was what got me inspired, right? Like you can see now my face is pretty slender. Before it was all bloated and, and horrible. And every single day I, I was not motivated. When I got up, I'm like, oh, man, I'm never going to be able to lose this weight. So what I did is I got on YouTube. I watched videos of people that had done the transformation I wanted and it gave me hope. It gave me inspiration that I could do that too. So create a routine that works for you. It could be books. It could be podcasts. It doesn't matter, but do it every single day. All right. So tip number six is to find a painful situation that motivates you. What I can tell you is most people move away from painful situations and they try to move towards pleasure and instant gratification. And because of this, this is why they stay stuck. This is why things never work out for them. There's nothing quite motivating as pain. And what I can tell you in my career, the times that I had like real pain, I literally move faster than I've ever moved in my life. If you think about it, if we were all motivated by pleasure, would we all not drive things like Lamborghinis, Range Rovers, and live in mansions? But we don't, right? And that's because usually we're comfortable. And so what you want to do is create a situation. If you're not in a bad situation, you want to create a bad situation in your head that if you don't take action, that like it's going to be so severe that you can't even stand that thought. Now, luckily for me, if you don't know my back history, I went to the Philippines. I was over $50,000 in debt. And then I was there for about two straight years and I was barely getting by. And at one point, like almost all my income dried up. I think I had somewhere in the range of about $3,000 in my bank account. Not a whole lot when you're in a third world country, you have a bills to pay. And that's also your money to run your basic business that you have to bring in the bills, right? And so I gambled all that money. I had to literally call my father at this point in time because I wanted to borrow a few thousand dollars to start a new business. And I remember that he thought that I was just crazy. He literally like asked me, like, what is your plan if this doesn't work out? You're left with like about a thousand dollars in your bank account. Your rent is basically a thousand dollars a month. Like you're gonna have nothing. You can't even get back to the US. How are you gonna eat? What are you gonna do? And I was so confident in my head at that point that I was going to make things work. I told him at that time I was going to make $30,000 in 30 days, and he thought I was nuts. He thought I lost it. And I remember at that point in time, I literally had it so made up in my head 
I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I was going to do it. In about 45 days, I made it right around $40,000 or so, and it was because I worked around the clock. And it was because of the fact that I was so motivated, I was so fed up, I did not want to spend another two years in the Philippines like that unenjoyable. Now, if you know anything about me now, I go back and forth to the Philippines. I love the country. It's my second home. But at that point in time, I was not enjoying the Philippines. I was broke. I was living very minimalistic. I honestly could barely afford clothes you know, that I needed, and I was just miserable. And I wanted to come home, you know, in the next three to four months because I hadn't seen my family in two straight years and I'm a family person. So the point here is that I was motivated by pain. I was tired of being tired. And so what you got to do is create a situation in your head that is far worse than the fact of not taking action. Because if you're a person right now who's watching this and you can't even get motivated to do the first step, it's probably because you're comfortable. It's probably because you don't have this urge right now, you know, literally lighting a fire under your butt. So for you, maybe that's like you lose your job and then you can't help your family or you can't even pay your basic bills. Maybe it's the fact that you thought in your head that like, man, if I don't do something now, I'm going to be stuck in this job for the rest of my life and live an average life. And that's just completely painful to you because you want to be an entrepreneur. Whatever it may be, you got to create a situation in your head that lights a fire under your butt that makes you take action. All right, my seventh tip, and I'm going to wrap this up, is to basically learn balance. You know, one thing I can tell you that I've learned over the course of time is that I have a bad habit of pushing myself too hard. I'm one of those ultra achievers. I want to literally, like, tackle the moon, right? And I've learned that there's times that I just got to be able to pull back. I got to be able to pull back so I have time to think. I have to pull back to take time to recharge. And so sometimes when I feel burned out, I feel demotivated. I don't really feel very focused. I'll just take a couple days off, do some stuff I like. I like Netflix. I like going to the movies. I like, you know, going for walks, whatever it be. Find something that just recharges you. Find something you like to do that has nothing to do with business and, and, and it recharges you so you want to go back and work hard again. Now, another thing I can tell you is that you got to make time for everything, right? As entrepreneurs, what's bad about entrepreneurship is that we can become so obsessed with working that we get doing things that we didn't get into entrepreneurship for in the first place. Most of us started entrepreneurship because we wanted a better life. We wanted more time with our family. We wanted more freedom. But we end up creating a situation for ourselves where we like we live to work. And that's not really balanced, right? That's overindulging. And so you got to learn to balance your life out. And there's going to be times in your life that certain areas are unbalanced and certain areas are balanced. And you got to kind of play that teeter-totter thing to balance things out. But you got to make time for everything you, you, you want to do, everything that's important in your life. I make time for family, friends, hobbies, the gym, uh, literally being lazy. Every single area of my life I make time for. And this is one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn is, is to understand that, you know, I got to have balance in my life. Otherwise, I'm going to burn myself out. If I go too hard on business... I'm going to be burned out on business. If I go too hard at the gym, I'm not going to feel like going to the gym anymore. If I go too hard on my hobbies, those things aren't even going to be fun to do anymore. So learn to balance things out. Learn to pull back when you need to. And learn to find things that recharge you because that's part of staying motivated. If you're not charged up about life, if you don't have energy in everything you do, like you're, you're going to burn out. And, and sometimes it's just because of the fact that you're trying to do the thing way too much and you don't ever give yourself time to think. So with that being said, I hope that you got value from this video. I hope this um, one of these tips at least helped you to get more motivated or to, to try in your life. And if it did, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button because it helps me reach more people. Don't forget to subscribe and um, take care and I'll see you in the next video.